Jeff. Fire away. Fire so away. How does having basically your whole 24 team here already kind of influence what you do in the spring? Right. I think. Uh, one, it just just gives us an opportunity to to spend more time with them, you know, and and really get a get a head start on bonding. Uh, also, you know, it, it it's a challenge for us to make sure that that we do a great job with the team because uh, we want the team to continue to be here uh, through the spring, through the next portal window, into the uh, into the summer. Uh, but it allows you to 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 really start gelling and bonding as a team and then as we get into spring ball uh, we're going to be impacted by some injuries in spring ball because we got a lot of guys that had postseason surgeries uh, but it also is going to create an opportunity for the new guys and the younger guys to get a lot of reps so i'm excited about having the bulk of the team here uh, but it really just gives us a head start in my opinion on on becoming a, a, a team Yeah, I'm, I'm excited, and and now having a chance to be back off the road and watch them work out and see all those guys move in uh, in person, because you know you know with the transfer portal, man, it's speed dating. You know you're watching everything on film. It's not a situation where you can have a live evaluation. Uh, so I, I was encouraged once once I got back and saw those guys move around, and then uh, the returns that I'm hearing from the weight room and the and the sports med staff just on their integration into the team has been very very positive. So so I'm excited about. Uh, you know, some improvements from an athleticism standpoint, a length standpoint. Um, and then also, you know, they're already showing, um, you know, positive signs of leadership uh, that they're bringing with them. You had a quarterback uh, mm -hmm. since Yeah. How do you feel about your quarterback situation right now? Where's the muscle too? Yeah. So, so I feel like we got a, pr a pretty healthy quarterback room, you know, right now, just from a competition standpoint. And you know, to add to add Gavin, I think the initial plan was to, to sign a high school 24, uh, but we weren't able to find the right guy. And then it just so happened that you know he entered into the portal, and we looked at his situation. He was a fit academically, was a fit, you know, socially, fit athletically. You know, he had three years left, um, so it was more so that he was the ideal, you know, guy that would be equate to like signing a high school kid. Because, uh, again, uh, uh, with Tony and, and Calandria being here, still thinking about the big picture and the distribution uh, of the room. Uh, so that was the thought process there. So really excited about uh, what he brings to the table. And then I feel good about the competition. And, and competition breeds success. And so we need competition. And obviously there was communication ahead of time with, uh, with Tony and with, uh, with, with AC uh, about uh, our plans, uh, just being transparent and honest with those guys. And, you know, Musket is, is – he's, he's – He's pushing hard, you know. He's pushing hard. Uh, we're kind of having to like say whoa a little bit, which is a good thing. Uh, but he's been attacking his attacking his rehab, and uh, saw him out here. He was doing everything in the weight room. He was running with the guys. Uh, so I'm anxious to see, you know, once we hit the grass, just where he is. I know he won't be able to have any contact at all uh, this uh, this spring, but I'm excited to see uh, how he's progressing, and, and hopeful that we'll be able to get him in and, and, and let him throw uh, during uh, during spring practice. Another state guy Right. So, so with Andre, uh, I wasn't personally involved in his recruitment at my previous institution, but I knew about him and just, you know, just raved about the type of young man he is, the potential that he is, and, and so I knew about him. And then when uh, we had an opportunity, uh, once he entered the portal, to man, we were first thing we're down there, and uh, where did we go? I think we went to, uh, we met at a Canes, you know, and had a little bit of lunch, and uh, then he had to go to class, and then we worked hard to to get his family up here uh, on a visit, and uh, just excited that he had interest in, in us, you know, and he's a guy that uh, was very high profile coming out of high school and had a lot of opportunities and had a lot of opportunities in the, in the portal as well. But uh, I think one key thing for him is he wanted to be closer to home. And, and, and obviously I wasn't here during his first recruitment, um, so I'm not sure, you know, how involved UVA was with him, you know, in his first, uh, first go around. But uh, he's an he's a outstanding young man, um, you know, great student, very conscientious. Uh, is excited for, for an opportunity to come and, and, and perform and produce. And uh, now we just got to go through the process of getting them integrated into the program. But uh, uh, it was, it was a, I wouldn't say an easy recruitment, but it was pretty smooth. You know, uh, he, uh, he knew what he was looking for, which, uh, which was, was, was helpful to us because he wanted an academic environment and an opportunity to compete. And, and he felt like we had a situation that was best for him. Kind of where you see each of those three transfers kind of 
Yeah, so so definitely gonna gonna use uh, Malik's success just as confirmation. You know, not not selling that hey, if you come to UVA, this is what's gonna happen for you because because one uh, man Malik put in the work, he earned that. Uh, kind of the stars aligned, the situation uh, created that, and, uh, and so we're hopeful that uh, we're able to. To, to, to replace that production. Uh, is it going to be one guy? We don't know, uh, but we did uh, just to let, let the guys know, hey, this is what's capable, and just validation of, of, of what we're able to do uh, as a staff and their development. And uh, when, you look at, when you look at Dre, um, you know, fast, big guy that, that gives us the ability to stretch the field vertically um, and then also will balance us out kind of on the outside. Uh, you look at Tyree, similar skill set to, uh, to Malik, uh, but he's another you know guy that's, that's fast, like world-class uh, speed and very versatile too. So I think he brings something that's a little bit different than what we have with his versatility starting at, that he started as a running back and then transitioned to wide out. So he'll be able to do a lot of different things uh, within, the, uh, within the system. And then, and then Trail, Trail's explosive. You know, he's an explosive guy that uh, can play in a slot, but he's got, he's got some size to him as well. He could easily transition uh, outside, so I'm excited. And then, you know, the biggest thing I'm excited about is it just brings competition to the to the room. You know, it's going to force Sedarian and Jr. and and Jaden and Titus and and Dak and and uh, hopefully I'm not missing anybody. Uh, Ty Lyric is going to force those guys uh, to get better. So uh, I'm excited about the whole room uh, improving uh, with the addition of those guys. Tony, you did not have any seniors on the offensive line. Mm -hmm. I know you added the one piece, but were you confident that? The returning players at those positions could just improve as they get older and stronger and, and more cohesive. Right, I believe. Uh and that's one thing that we that we, we talked about in recruiting is we got all five of our linemen uh, returning, and then adding Drake, you know, just gives us you know additional depth. And you know, there's other guys too that 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 I believe are gonna gonna help us going forward. Like we didn't get to see much of Houston Curry, but uh, because of injury, but the times that he was in there, very very promising, you know, young prospect. And you know, and then you got Charlie Patterson, you know, is a guy that uh, you know was battled a little bit of injury, but he's got another uh, opportunity to, to to go compete. And then we. We moved Jack Whitmer from from tight end to, to offensive line, and there's some promise there. So just feel good about uh, the the opportunity to improve, um, and and just just excited about those guys, uh, and I think the leadership too. You know, just the, the returning leadership, um, and then they saw you know when they when they played together as a unit um, that they were capable of, of 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 doing some positive things. So I'm excited about that group and excited about some of the young guys that that many people may not have heard about last year that could. Put push, you know, to, to either contribute, you know, as a starter or be a, a, a very, very um, good rotational guy. You guys were the, uh, so close biggest to challenge with the uh, recruiting calendar right now. <laughs> Sleep. <laughs> Sleep is the biggest challenge. Um, you know, it's just different, man. It's, 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 it's different. And, uh, you know, I think the, the biggest challenge, if I had to say, is, is right now, you know, being able to maintain your roster through uh, the end of, of, of May, going into the summer, I think is the biggest challenge because now you have spring ball, guys can evaluate where they're at, and then there's another window, right? And I think the challenge with that window is, uh, I don't know if there's gonna be as much movement uh, in that window, right? For you to be able, if you do lose guys, to have the ability to have a big enough pool to go replace guys. So that's, I think, a, a challenge right now. Um, you know, it was awesome to get out and, and be able to, to not feel like a criminal when you walked into the high school because you could actually talk to a junior. Like, I mean, <laughs> before, man, you're scared to death. I was scared to death during this time walking in because obviously you're recognizable and, and people want to want to shake your hand and say hello. And you're like, I, I, now you could actually have conversation with the, with the juniors, which I think was was uh, was really good. And, and, and I think, you know, for the for the high school kids, it's 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 tough right now uh, because of the two signings and then like I think about this signing uh, date man this used to be a big deal and I, and I know there's still some high school guys out there uh, that 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 did not probably get the opportunities that they want so I mean there's some there's a lot of pros but there's also some cons to kind of where we are um, in college football right now <laughs> yeah, so 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 initially, not initially, but years back, 
there was a push for quality of life for the coaches, right? With the changes that came about, it was like, okay, we're, we're going to focus on the changes and coaches, y'all just, y'all just adjust, right? Um, is it manageable? Yes, but I think each uh, individual coach and staff is going to have to determine how they manage it, right? The, the challenge with that is competition. Right, everybody's competitive, and, and, and I'm pretty sure in your industry it's the same way, man. You want to get the story, so you don't want to get outworked, even though you know, like, you probably need to be in there with your wife and your kids. You know, you're in there, you know, doing your job. So, so that will have to come from us until this whole thing gets, just gets under control and we get some more uh, transparency, some more, some more, some more unity, some more, some more uh, enforcement, just to kind of, you know, put some guardrails on uh, on all of that. You were so close. Yeah, you know, so as you look at it, I'm excited about the depth, you know, that it that it adds. Uh, I think that if you when you when we're doing self scout now, offense, defense, special teams, when you look at it, uh, you know, depth is is something that that became an issue, especially late in games, later in the season. You know, it's it's a big difference when when you got a guy that's that's playing his 75th snap versus the competition where they're rolling guys that got depth and he might be on his 30th snap, right? I mean, it's, you can condition them all you want but there's just a difference, right? So I think what, what this class does is just adds more depth and then competition, right? And then it also, I think, you know, continues to, to add to uh, the direction that we're going from a recruiting standpoint, you know, philosophically from body types to, to, to way guys fit in the scheme. So just overall, I think it, it brings competition, it brings depth, and then it's just, uh, you know, one more class of guys that, that have come, you know, to the University of Virginia to play, play for this staff. Coach, you mentioned Chris Tyree's speed. Yeah. What else do you like about him? What type, oh. How will you use him? Right. What type of impact do you hope he'll make? Right. So I, th I think the, the determination of how will we use him is once we get into spring practice. But what you like about him is, is one, is speed. But he's very, very mature. Um, he's a very, very humble young man. He brings great leadership. Um, he's already been a gym rat. He's around the building all the time, uh, invested. Uh, so, so all the intangibles uh, is what, what I like the most about him. And then with his speed, man, you can do so many different things with him. Now, in terms of you know, where he fits within, within the offense, man, we'll determine that uh, more so in the spring. But how I'm going to use him, I'm going to lean on him from a leadership standpoint. He's a college graduate. Um, you know, he's, he's, he went through the process once, and then the second time he knew exactly what he wanted to do, which tells me that he's focused on a goal. He's goal-oriented. So uh, I'm going to lean on his leadership and the intangibles, uh, a lot like Malik. You know, that's, that's what I think uh, I appreciate the most about Malik. People focus on the 100-plus catches and the yards and all of that. But, man, Malik was a leader from the day he got here. And that leadership, you know, helped us to, to, to even be in the positions that we were. So, so I'm excited about uh, that with, uh, with Chris because I see a lot of the same uh, intangibles. Mm -hmm. Two quarterbacks. Last year. Mm -hmm. what, what do you hope to bring out in them in the spring? What, what do you want to yep. do? Yeah, so, so uh, obviously, totally, totally get healthy, but continue to see him progress. Uh, from a leadership standpoint, um, just just command of the uh, uh, of the offense. Uh, same thing with Calandria. You want to see Calandria grow, uh, just in the in the complete quarterback aspect. I think we saw uh, flashes of that. You know, there were times where it's like, man, he's 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 commanding the offense. He's managing the game. And then there were other times where you saw, you know, he was relying more on just athleticism and his and his talent. So I want to see him continue to grow uh, in that area, and then have those guys push each other. Right, and then bring their 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 strengths uh, out, and then then on the weaknesses have have each other there to sharpen each other. So, biggest thing is is, is with Tony is is get healthy, and then continue to progress uh, from a leadership standpoint, and then with AC, you know, see him continue to progress in the total package in terms of being able to command the offense, manage the game, you know, impact the game with his athleticism, uh, and then not lose you know his his moxie. I think both of them got moxie, and and that's what I don't want. To take away from them as they continue to progress, and it's a fine line when you're dealing with quarterbacks uh, because of, of just man the, the enormous amount of responsibility that they have, and you know the great ones, you know they have an innate you know characteristic about themselves that that as a coach you don't want to coach out of them. So you got to be uh, mindful of that, and, and you got to find the right way to develop them uh, without you know uh, putting too much on their plate to where you know they they, they lose what makes them special. Mm -hmm. Okay. Man, uh, I'm a skill guy. 
and uh, and I know it, but 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 I recognize that games are won in the trenches, right? That's the that's the difference in in winning uh, and losing is is in the trenches, and I think everybody aspires to to play um, at the highest level versus the versus the the best competition, and in those type of games, man, you got to be able to to win in the trenches, and the best teams that I've been around, the leadership comes from you know the front seven. Uh, and so it's awesome to, to have all of those guys come back uh, for another year up front. And then also, you know, the continuity with the offensive line progressing together. Uh, hopefully we'll gain more leadership uh, from those guys that are returning. Uh, and, then, and then make sure that the guys that are returning on the D-line, Chico and, and, uh, and Cam and Ja and Ben, uh, they, they really embrace their, their leadership role. Uh, because to get to where we want to go, it's going to take, you know, winning in the trenches. Yeah, so so Sage, I, I got to coach for for one year. Uh, the last year I was 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 there. I transitioned to tight ends, and, and he was there as a young guy. And one, I, I love his personality. Man, he's got a great personality. Uh, I love his commitment, his leadership. Man, he's a team oriented guy. Uh, I think he brings you know some athleticism and some speed uh, to the uh, to the room. Uh, and then Tyler, you know, Tyler is a guy that uh, has got a lot of experience, got production. Um, again, he's going to bring leadership. Uh, he's got a he's got a fun personality as well. Uh, so I like the, the the blend of those two. Uh, and then it's gonna it's gonna challenge the younger guys, you know, to to develop. But it's also going to show them, you know, what it looks like, you know, when you do develop. So I'm excited about about both Tyler and Sage. But the uh, biggest thing with Sage is is man, I love his leadership. You know, he's he's battle tested. Um, and he's hungry for an opportunity to, uh, to, to, to be the guy. So to watch him and Tyler uh, battle uh, when, they get, when they get here in the fall is going to be fun. I know there's a lot of unknowns going into the spring, mm -hmm. the spring portal, but when you look at the roster, do you see a position that you might want to reevaluate? Yeah, so, so, so the biggest need I think for us is right now is, is corner. You know, it's finding us a corner and, and in this uh, this window that's about to, that closes today, we were looking for a developmental high school guy that we thought, you know, could be a guy that we bring in, and we just didn't find that guy. And so I, I didn't want to invest a scholarship, you know, in, in a guy that that we didn't see enough, you know, potential in. And that position right there, right now, is the hardest to find. If you track the portal, man, those guys they they go they go like hotcakes, man. They're uh, they're fast. Everybody's trying to find corners. So that's the one the one area that I'll be. Uh, Looking to see if there if there is a guy uh, out there that can come in and help us at that corner because I feel like we were able to help ourselves at safety. Uh, we were in a great position at linebacker, you know, with our depth there, the D line. There wasn't a need there. It's just at the corner position, uh, being able to add some 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 competitive depth uh, to that position. What do uh, Kempton and Kendrick bring uh, yeah. to the corner? How will you? Yeah, so so Corey, I'll start with Corey, and then I'll go to the other two. So Corey is man, he's a big, he's a big long safety, right? So he's gives us the ability to have some 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 flexibility. He can play multiple safety spots, and then you know he can stay in there in, in twelve personnel heavy sets because he's a bigger body. He can kick down to your nickel Sam if you need him. Uh, so he's got a ton of versatility. So so he'll be a guy that'll go compete, uh, probably start him in one spot and see how quickly he picks it up, and then we can transition him to other spots. And then Kendrick is a, is a combo guy in that he can play corner and he can play safety. So again, it gives us uh, some more depth and it also gives you uh, additional uh, uh, options if you're playing you know, spread teams that play fast and you, know, you need to get some more secondary guys on the field. Um, and then you know, Kempton uh, is, a, is a true corner. Uh, so excited about him, but he brings experience. You know, he brings leadership, brings competition. Uh, kind of very similar to, to to Malcolm coming in last year. Uh, so it's good, but it's going to make Malcolm better as well because his competition there. It's going to make Keandre better. It's going to make all those those young guys better. So uh, I see him being more of truly just a corner, and then Kendron being a, a swing guy, and then and then I guess you can say Corey as a potential swing guy just because of his size. You know, he could kick down and and, and play in some more of your your heavy sets uh, as a as a nickel sound.